Oh, greetings, people of God. I greet you all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our last chapter. Oh, I'm so blessed. Our last, last chapter. Make sure that you listen to the previous ones if you are new. Amen. The last chapter, the title, Three uh, People You Must Honor. Three People You Must Honor. I'm not going to be long. Just read on the book. So I'm going to avoid to be long. Amen. Number one, honor your parents, your physical parents. Who are your physical parents? I said physical parents can mean your biological parents or anyone who played a parenting role in your life. And I hope that this also can include your parents-in-law, your mother-in-law also, your father-in-law is your parent. People of God, a parent is anybody who played a parenting law, a parenting role, sorry. Anybody who held, who contributed in your growth. Because somebody will say, man of God, I don't have parents, my parents passed away, or I was not raised by my physical parents, doesn't matter. Anybody who raised you up is your parent. It can be an uncle, it can be a brother, it can be your sister, it can be your auntie, it can be your stepfather, even your stepmother. That's your parent. Anybody who contributed in your growth, that particular person is your parent. And the Bible requires us to honor our parents. So we say, why should we honor our parents? Number one, it's a promise that it shall be well with us and we shall have more days on earth. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 it shows us that it shows us that when we honor our parents we shall be it shall be well with us and we shall have more days on earth it shall be well with us and we shall have more days on earth when we honor our parents honor your parents if you want things to be well with you honor your parents Honor. Don't find yourself having a case, unnecessary case of parents. Honor your parents, regardless if it's your your your, your mother-in-law, either it's, it's who. Honor your parents. Number two. Why should we honor our parents? For it is pleasing to God. Uh, I have I've heard many people saying, "Oh, I walk by faith." Quoting Hebrews chapter eleven verse six. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I walk by faith, I'm pleasing God. Listen to me, my brother, my sister. Regardless of how high and how powerful your faith can be or how strong your faith can be, but if you don't honor your parents, you are not pleasing God. Because it's not only faith that pleases God. Even honoring your parents pleases the Lord. Read it. First Timothy chapter five verse four. It says, "Those," it says, "teach those those kids to honor or to take care of their parents as they did when they were young." So the same way that your parents helped you when you are young and raised you up, when you are old and you are stable, you have to help them. Honor them. You honor them by, 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 by that way because it's pleasing to God. So I'm saying you can't be a Christian and saying, oh, I'm going to church, I'm going to church, I'm going to church, I'm going to church. But, in, but your parents, you are not honoring them. They're like, the parents are like, oh, if they only knew him. He's just a stubborn child. He's just disobedient. Hey. How can you be disobedient that you carry a Bible? How can you be stubborn in the house then you are carrying a Bible? The Bible says it's pleasing unto God. If faith is also pleasing to God, but honoring parents is also pleasing to God. It's not only faith. Two things please the Lord. Faith and honoring your parents. Honor your parents. And by the way, just to say it, this is not only for kids. Everybody, even though you are 40 years, as long as your parent is still alive, you have to honor that parent. You need to treat that particular father or mother with respect. You can't say, I'm old now, I'm 40 years. 
I can honor my father. No. Listen, the age difference between you and your father is still remains the same. You get, if the age difference between you and your father was 20 years, regardless, even if now you are now 30, the gap between you and the father is still 20 years. Even when you become 40, the gap between you and the father is still 20 years. But the gap between you and the mother and whosoever cared for you is still the same. So regardless, even if you become 40 years, uh, in the eyes of your, of your parents, you are still a child. That's why you need to honor them, honor your parents. It's pleasing to God. Here I wrote, what does it mean to honor your parents? Bullet number one, treat them with respect. Treat your parents with respect. That's what it means to, to honor them. Number two, help them with material and physical needs. Matthew chapter 15, verse 4 to 6. Jesus there shows us that he says, you people, you Pharisees, you tell people, uh not to honor their parents but to take the money that they were supposed to help to their parents to give it to the church that's what he says he says but these people could have used the money to help their parents but when the parent is in need you you tell oh i will send it to church help their parents also help don't just give to church also give to your parents help your parents with money or any physical thing don't be that child who doesn't know who's just stubborn, who's just stingy. Help your parents if they need help, obviously. But don't let them ask you help for help. Amen. Don't just give in church. Also give to your parents. If I was a pastor after money, I couldn't be preaching this to you. Amen. Nobody preaches this. You also have to help your parents. Amen. Number two, honor your employer, your teacher, or your employees if you are a boss or an owner of a company. I said, you honor your employer. If you are employed, you, you have an, a boss or your employer, you need to honor your boss or your somebody who, who owns the company that you are working to or somebody that you report to or your supervisor or anybody, your manager, you have to honor the person. If you are a student, a, 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 a learner, honor your teacher, honor your lecturer, honor your tutor, honor the person. If you you are a businessman, you own a business or wherever you are, you are a manager, honor your employees, people who are under you, you treat them with respect. I just want to show you that the Christian life goes a long way it's not just something i believe in jesus you have to you are dealing with people and the bible shows us how to deal with people ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 colossians chapter 3 verse 22 ephesians 6 5 colossians 3 22 it shows us that as a christian if you are employed you are supposed to be faithful that's what he says he says don't just be faithful when they are looking at you the bible says so Says, he says, don't just be faithful when the employer is here. Don't just be faithful when the supervisor is here. Read it for yourself. That's what he says. Somebody saying, man of God, it's my first time to know that the Bible teaches about this. <laughs> so he says, don't be, don't, don't, don't just do things to please them, to please the supervisor. The Bible says, even if they are not around, even if the supervisor is not here, the employer is not here, you still have to be faithful at your workplace. My brother, my sister, become faithful at your workplace. Don't just be faithful when the supervisor is, uh, arrives. You know there are people like that. Who? Oh, the supervisor is here. They are so committed. They are working. When the supervisor leaves, they look uh, through the window. When the car gets out of the of the building, they chillax. Hey! Then you are saying you are a Christian. You believe in Christ. The Bible says, "Do it as if like you are doing it for Christ." Please read this scripture for yourself. Ephesians six five, Colossians three twenty two. Read them for yourself. The Bible says, "Do that work as if like you are doing it for Jesus Christ." Leave a shaka. Meaning, in other words, when you work, become so perfect, faithful, punctual, as if like your boss is Jesus. 
Don't do it for the boss. Do it for Jesus. That's what the Bible says. And you find certain certain Christians reading the Bible during long, uh, work time and not focusing on the work. You are, a, you, are, you, are, you are a receptionist. You are busy reading the Bible. Calls are coming in. You are not answering calls. You say I was reading the Bible. No, my sister. There is time for everything under the sun. There is time of reading the Bible. There's nothing wrong of, of reading the Bible at your work, but I'm just saying, make schedule things properly. You can't be reading the Bible uh, uh, during uh, working hours. The Bible says you work as if like you're working for Jesus. So you're, you feel like when you're reading the Bible, you're pleasing Jesus. No, the Bible is telling us you working faithfully, you are pleasing Jesus. He said, do what as if like you're doing it for Jesus. So as far as you're concerned, be conscious that I'm employed by Jesus. Not by Mr. John or by Mr. Tabo. Oh, it's just like, oh, I don't like Tepang. Tepang is the boss of this. It's just I don't like him. The Bible says it's not a matter of you like Tepang, who is your boss or not. What matters is that do it for Jesus. Even if you are a school, you're a school learner, there are, there are those learners who, who, like, who, who are uh, disruptive in class. You can't be a Christian and be a, a disruptive learner. They are learners like that. They are shouting to teachers, hey. Hey, man. Or you're a student even in university. Your behavior, your reaction, your honor to the lecturer is to be different. You have to honor your lectures, regardless. Don't be like, oh, it's freedom. She can't tell me anything. You are a Christian. You are different. You are a child. You are a son of a king. You are a son of a king. You are a king. My sister, even though you are a female, you are a king. Kings, don't, don't argue in public. Don't do those nonsense. Respect. Kings understand honor. They understand authority. Honor that lecturer. Honor that teacher. Don't be those learners who come quickly when the teacher is not around. You are shouting, you are shouting. When the teacher comes, you sit down. The man says, don't do it. It's just because they are observing you. When you read, when you read for that test, do it as if like you are doing it for Jesus. Some of you, you have assignments. Do it as if like you are doing it for Jesus. Be committed to it. Oh, Jesus, I won't finish. People of God, be serious. If you are a business owner, you have to treat your employees with respect. Some of you are business owners right now. Some of you are going to be business owners in the future. Pay your employees. Don't be that Christian that the employees are saying, ah, don't see, oh, that guy he always goes to church, he says we should pray, but he, he insults us, he swears. No, no, no. If you are an employer or a businessman with a Christian, as a Christian, you need to be a businessman or an employer with the difference. Be a manager with the difference. Be a supervisor with a difference. Honor your employees. Yes, I'm not saying you should not compro you should compromise. If they are late, then you say yes. No. Be genuine. What I'm saying, stick to the work. Make sure that they do the work. What I'm saying is that treat them fairly. Fairly. Be fair. If you are a businessman or employer. And even if you are a businessman, you don't just sell things that are, don't benefit the people in the name of money. No. You are, if you are a businessman, you are a businessman with a difference. I remember a certain man of God, people who know me, I, I love business. No? I really love business. That's why to me to be a pastor is really a prize. <laughs> I know I'm called, but to be honest, if I, it was my will, I could have just been in business. But God called me and I said, Amen. And I've decided that, I've decided that, that I'm going to give my life to God. Amen. So, but uh, there was a, there's a man who's a Christian, he's a billionaire. He's from Australia. He once said a, a statement. He said, we, we will never know how moral you are, your morality as a Christian, until you are in business. Because business will test your morality as a Christian. Will you sell something that has expired just because you want to make money? Or will you stick that I'm a Christian? Honor people who are under you. Amen. On, if you are a school learner, a student, honor your lecturers. 
talk to them differently. If other learners are disrespecting them, I know. I come from, I, I, I was once a student at varsity, I know. Learners will just want to speak to the lecturer by respect, regardless. People have got me, I've made a decision a long time ago that I'm going to honor everybody that I meet. Just make that decision. Whether you'll be successful, regardless if the person speaks bad to you or good, the, what good will it make if he speaks good about you? Does it matter? I've made a decision many years ago. I will honor everybody. Listen, regardless you criticize me when I meet you, I honor you. Say, greetings, say, greetings, madam. I greet you. You are arrested. I, uh, hello. Because, listen, you liking me and you not liking me doesn't do anything to me. Does it increase my salary? Does it increase anything? No. Make a choice. Be wise. Honor. Honor everybody that you meet. Honor people. If you honor people, you will be honored. Honor. Just give honor to who is, is Jew. The Bible says, let's give honor to those who is Jew. Just give honor to the person who is Jew to honor. The president, whosoever, the, the vice chancellor, honor the person. Obviously, I'm not saying when the people are saying, when the president is saying something against the Bible, we can't say. I'm not saying we should not speak up. What I'm just saying is honor. Just honor the person. Obviously, you can speak, but everything you are honoring the person. Amen. You can speak, you can protest against churches. If they want to close churches, we can know they can't close churches. If they want to do, we know they can't do this. This is not good. This is nonsense. But what I'm saying is just that let's honor people. Amen. But I'm not saying we should like, we'll just be lambs and we just agree on everything. No. We stand. We can't agree when the government wants to close churches uh, for no reasons. So you see such things. I'm just making an example. Amen. Okay, number three, honor your man of God. Honor your pastor, honor your man of God. How? Number one, by submitting to him as your leader. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 and verse 17. Hebrews 13, 7 and 17, first Thessalonians 5, 2, no, 5, 12, sorry, 5, 12, first Thessalonians. You need to honor, the Bible says, submit unto those who are are above you in leadership the bible says so, so that they can do it with joy because they shall give an account for your souls do you know that i'm gonna give an account for your soul so please as a as a child of god all submit to your leadership be be a be a member who submits under leadership of your pastor amen don't be somebody who's always rebelling who's always uh, against this against this no the Bible says you have to submit. Read the scriptures. I don't have time. The second one, by welcoming him with joy, you need to welcome your pastor or your man of God with joy. That is Philippians chapter 2, verse 27, verse 30. Philippians chapter 2, verse 27 to verse 30. Paul is talking about a certain man who was a servant of God with him in those days. He said to the church of Philippians, I'm sending, I'm sending this man to you. He says when he arrives, I, I welcome him with joy. That's what he says. He says when he arrives, welcome him with joy. He says because he has laid his life for Christ. He says not only him, but do the same to men who are like him. Men who have laid themselves for Christ, who have given their lives for Christ. He says you must also accept them or welcome them with joy. When a man of God enters the building or the church, you need to celebrate, you need to welcome him with joy. When a man of God comes to you, you don't just be cross. Man of God, why? What are you saying? Oh, what were you saying, a man of God? <laughs> Amen. No, you need to show, you need to be happy when you meet your pastor. Smile, practice it. You open, you smile. You welcome him, the Bible says, welcome him with joy. Even in the church, not only Pastor Praise, any man, even the man of God, any man of God who is invited when he comes, you honor him with joy. Number three, treat him with respect. You need to treat your pastor with respect. Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. Galatians 4, 14. It, Paul says, when I was with you, Galatian church, oh, you treated me with respect. He said, he said, you treated me as if like I'm an angel. Just imagine. 
Paul says this church of Galatians treated him as if like he was an angel, and he says as if like I was Jesus Christ himself. Hey, have you heard people saying, "Oh, these pastors of yours, you are elevating them as if like they are Jesus. This this person is a man. Pastor Praise is just a man. He's not Jesus." But Paul hears it in the Bible. In the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus is saying to Paul, Paul himself, he's saying, he said, he said, you treated me as if like I'm an angel. Read it for yourself. Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. He says, as if like I was Jesus Christ himself. Uh, the church of Galatians honored Peter. They took care of Peter as if like he was Jesus. But you, when we honor our pastors, you say we we take them as if they are Jesus. That's, there's nothing wrong about that because they are men of God. They are, they, are, they are gifts to the body of Christ. We celebrate them because we celebrate the God. They are God. Who is our God? Obviously, you can, you can worship your pastor, but I'm just saying, I just want to make it clear. I'm not saying when you say we take him like Christ, you, just, you start praying in his name, you start worshiping him. No. We are talking about honor, respecting him. Respecting your man of God. Don't be like, I respect Jesus, I respect Jesus. But you start speaking bad about pastors. You know, in this church, we don't speak bad about men of God. We don't. Just our principle, just our law, it's our law. You can be you can be bent in this church for just saying any word against the man of God. Not Pastor Praise only. I'm just speaking about any man of God. We can disqualify you for anything. We don't we don't do that. We don't do that. You don't speak against men of God. Any man of God. My friends will tell you you never hear me speaking bad things about any man of God. Oh Jesus, you treat him. The, another another bullet. You treat him as your father. First Timothy, First Corinthians, chapter four, verse fifteen. First Corinthians, chapter four, verse fifteen. Paul says, Paul says, Oh Jesus, he says you have many preachers, but you don't have many fathers. He says I've begotten you through the gospel. So the person who have preached the gospel to you, who feeds your spirit, is your spiritual father. He has begotten you through the gospel. So treat your pastor as your father, your spiritual father. Oh, the last one. By supporting you, how do you honor them? By supporting him, your pastor, your man of God, with material needs and taking care of his physical life. Remember, the man of God is also a person. He also has life. As a member, it's your responsibility to take care of your man of God. And be, be careful. Everything that I'm saying here, I have scripture reference. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 4 to 15. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 14 to 20. As a child of God, you need to take care of your man of God. You'll read the book of First Corinthians. I don't have time. Paul says those who preach the gospel must live by the gospel. He says, if we have sown spiritual seeds in you, is it wrong when we, when we reap physical things? Remember, a pastor, never, never take the duty of a pastor for granted. For us to prepare a message, for us to preach, for me to make voice notes every day, it takes energy, it takes time, and it's, it's a sign of dedication. Dedication. Amen. The Lord Jesus said, those who... Who, pre, who, 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 who preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Even Jesus himself, the Bible says there were uh, ladies, one lady, Mary Magdalene, the other one who the demon left her. She had seven demons and she was delivered. The Bible says those ladies used to help Jesus with money and other material things. So take care for the life of your pastor. Take care for him. Amen. And we're not doing things of church for money, no, at all. It's about Jesus. Amen. It's about Jesus. And Paul, you read it here in First Corinthians chapter 9. He says, I've not even used this right of mine because, so that the kingdom of God can be advanced. And, and me and Pastor Priest, I've never used this right. I've never asked anybody for money. No. 
Amen. But my aim is for the gospel to be preached. We use the money to advance the kingdom. We use the money to, to build uh, buildings. We use the money to open radio stations, to, to plant churches, to open TV stations. That's the purpose. Our aim is to preach the gospel. People of God, honor these three people in your life and God will bless you. God will bless you, people of God, and you will walk in the right way with God. People of God, I love you. Let's preach the gospel. You're going to write a test based on these teachings. Uh, very soon I'm going to tell you, and I'm happy that we are done. Can, can you just celebrate? Celebrate. Post. Just type right now in the group chat. Celebrate if you are excited. I love you. May God bless you. Signing out. Pastor Praise. Before I leave, remember, honor your man of God. Remember, honor your employer, your teacher, your employees. Honor even your physical parents. Help your parents with money. Give them something. Don't just be a child to have money who is successful. Then your parents are suffering. No. No. People of God, I love you. Signing out. Pastor Praise.